Hi there, this is a quick tip on how to use drum racks to kind of collect all your favourite particular sounds. Um, if you check what I've done here in my drum collection, I have drum racks dedicated to particular sounds. And it's quite useful to do this um, to get projects in full swing very quickly. So I'm going to show you a little project, well just something I knocked up within a minute and this is what it sounds like. So I want to put a kick sound on that. So I'm going to drag over my drum rack and in this it has 128 different kick sounds. Now I will be honest, uh, I haven't completely auditioned all these sounds, so some might not be very good. So let's just do a typical 4x4 MIDI clip uh, drop on the kicks here, and it sound like this. And if I use the down arrow key on the keyboard, it will go through the different samples I've put in my collection. So I'm going to get everything going by using this scene launch button. Okay, so you know, you can just, as you can see, just go, keep going through down your selection and you will stumble upon sounds that sound quite good with what you're working with. And I can carry on here by using my first clap pack I've made. So it's the same example as the kicks, but just claps, another 128 claps in my rack. Just waiting for it to load because um, there's quite a few clips here to buffer. And I'm just going to copy over that MIDI clip and get rid of the first and third downbeat. So it's a typical um, clap hit. House clap. And once again, just using the arrow keys, I can go up and down, trial in at different clap sounds. That's good, I'm just going to shift it forward a bit using the command 4 button on the Mac. So I'm happy with that and I'm just going to show you one more example. Uh, let's do, let's do a closed hi-hat. Apologies for the delay. I do need to uh, upgrade my my uh, laptop. It's getting on a bit now. Five years old. Okay, so I'm just going to drag the actually it's a bad one to do. I'm going to drag the kick MIDI clip over. Make them smaller. And then. There we go. See that already sounds pretty good, but we you know we're just all just. And the good thing is you can go back on stuff uh, and you know, alter as you go. Now, if you're running quite a slow machine, as you know, like mine, you'd probably want to actually freeze the tracks down you know, halfway through a project when you know you're not going to change the kit, you've, you're happy with the kick, um, and then you can um, you know, flatten the actual sample itself. And what this will do is save you a lot of CPU um, usage because you know it doesn't have them 128 clips anymore it's just got a simple wave file which Ableton loves there you go. another use apps you do kind of sometimes stack sounds on each other so it's quite easy to use multiple uh, clap sounds and you know, that sounds a lot better and you know because it's in the drum rack Okay. And also
also because it's in the drum rack you can you know individually you know change different parameters with the actual track so if I just wanted to pan a little bit left so a little bit right on this one and then the other clap sound just a little bit to the left so I'm going for that kind of disco sound and then you can put a filter on it to clean it up It's a typical low pass at around about 300. So it kind of gives you an idea of how to quickly get projects in full swing um, you know, by categorising your favourite you know, loops. I mean, to be fair, you might only need one kick crack. I mean, you've got 128 kicks on there. If you were really anal about what sounds were good, that, that would be all you'd need really with all your remix projects. So now I'm going to show you how to create your own rack. So I'm just going to quickly delete what we have here already because I'm going to need all this CPU help I can get with this laptop. So you create a new MIDI file which is here and you drag over the drum rack which should just load a blank uh, canvas now you can use whatever sample CDs you've got and you could even use DRP's ones which are available for download. Now ideally you want 128 you know, files to proper utilise what we've got here but if you're kind of dragging right from the start and you only have like 50, drag them all the way down to the bottom to C2, sorry C-2 and that way it's, you know, it's... it's um, organized well in the blocks. So I'm going to do the same again with my sample pack 2 on the hi-hats, closed hi-hats, and I'm dragging it from where it left off, yeah? So already we've got 100, you know, let's just pretend for now they're hand-picked kind of closed hats. I'm really happy with these. Now because the drum rack automatically sets the um, the DB value for all clips to minus 12, you may want to put a utility device on the end of the chain and get it back to 12 DP so it's back to zero. But in this example, because it's closed hi-hats, you know, usually you do mix it around about that kind of value of minus 12. So for this example, I'm not going to bother doing that. So once you're happy with your rack, So just for this example, I'm going to put them in this folder. All you've got to do is drag this into wherever you want all your kind of files to be. Actually, I don't need that folder, so I'm just going to put it there. Now it's asking you, do you want to move the hi-hat samples that you've put into your collection? Do you want it all to be located centrally into the... Um, into the actual live pack that we're going to create. For now, I'm just going to say no, but I mean, if you just, if that's the way you want to work, it's not a problem. Um, at least you can delete the original files. Um, it just depends how you want to work, but I'm not going to not copy that for now. Okay, and it's asking me to rename the live pack, so, as it's closed, hi hats four now for me. And there you go, it's created the next pack. And so if you just wanted to use that in a project, you've simply just got to do the same thing again, drag them over. Drag it over to a blank space in Ableton, it creates a new MIDI channel. And then just get a MIDI kit it going with some triggers in there. And, uh, you know, and away you go. And you know, it's just I think it's a real simple way of kind of getting your projects, you know, up to speed. I mean this is this is transferable in any kind of project you deal with. So you know, if you do a lot of remixing like I do, and I DJ quite a bit, so it's good to have stuff just 
to kind of fire in there straight away, you know, it's a very useful tool. So I hope you found that useful.